Hello everyone, and welcome back to another video from our channel, Immortal News. In today's segment, we're bringing you updates on notable personalities who have sadly passed away today, August 12th, and in the recent days gone by. In addition to that, we've curated special tributes that you won't want to miss. Later on, we will discuss the tragic circumstances surrounding the sudden passing of Alabama's basketball star, Caleb White, from Pinson Valley High School. Furthermore, we will also shed light on the heartbreaking incident of a three-year-old migrant child's death on a Texas chartered bus, the sad departure of Jeremy Hunt's younger brother, Charlie Hunt, and the shocking demise of Brazilian soccer player Jose Aldine Oliveira, known as Dion, during his training. So, do stay with us for these profound stories. But before we delve into the details, please show your love and support by giving this video a like. Thank you. Number 15. Linda Haynes, an evocative presence in cinema's most captivating roles. Linda Haynes, best known for her remarkable portrayal in the thriller Rolling Thunder, passed away peacefully at home on July 17, 2023, at the age of 75. The news of her demise was recently confirmed by her heartbroken son, who revealed the loss in a poignant statement. Born Linda Lee Sylvander on November 4, 1947, in Miami, Florida, she began her cinematic journey with the 1969 Japanese sci-fi monster film, Latitude Zero. This paved the way for roles in iconic films such as Coffee, The Nickel Ride, and her standout role in Rolling Thunder. Her talent was not just recognized by audiences, but also fellow cinematic maestros. Director Quentin Tarantino once lauded her, drawing a comparison between her and the legendary Ava Gardner. Linda had an evocative presence that captured viewers, embodying her characters with a depth and authenticity that lingered long after the credits rolled. Outside of her illustrious acting career, Linda was a life member of the actor's studio, proving her dedication and love for the craft. The industry has not just lost a versatile actress, but a luminous star whose legacy will resonate for generations. Linda is survived by her son, Gregory Leif Sylvander, her daughter-in-law, Courtney Lynn Sylvander, and grandchildren James Riley Sylvander and Amelia Grace Sylvander. The outpouring of grief is a testament to the indelible mark she left both on and off screen. Tribute to Linda Haynes. Number 14. Tom Number 13. Joan Kaplan Davidson, a champion for New York's architectural and cultural heritage. Joan Kaplan Davidson, the revered philanthropist and preservationist, passed away at the age of 96 on Friday in Hudson, New York. Leaving behind a vast legacy, Davidson's passion for New York's architecture and cultural landmarks was unparalleled. In her lifetime, Davidson served in prominent roles such as the chairwoman of the New York State Council on the Arts in the 1970s and New York State Parks Commissioner in the 1990s. However, her tenure from 1977 to 1993 as president of the J.M. Kaplan Fund, established by her father, Jacob M. Kaplan, remains a highlight. Under her leadership, the fund was instrumental in supporting various initiatives from preserving city landmarks to backing cultural institutions. Davidson's keen eye for conservation was evident when the foundation played a pivotal role in forming the Gracie Mansion Conservancy. Not limiting her efforts to just writing checks, Davidson was actively involved in her philanthropic activities. She believed in using funds strategically to kickstart causes, rather than just providing vast amounts. Born in 1927 in New York City to Jacob and Alice Kaplan, Davidson imbibed her philanthropic zeal from her parents. Besides her involvement in arts and architecture, Davidson was also a champion for civil rights and was dubbed the fiercest funder of the city's progressive liberal causes. Throughout her journey, Joan Kaplan Davidson's dedication to New York and its rich heritage remained unwavering. Even when she stepped down from the presidency of the Kaplan Fund, her influence lingered, ensuring that the foundation remained central to New York's life and growth. 
In remembrance of her immense contributions, Davidson is survived by her four children, twelve grandchildren, and five great-grandchildren. Her spirit and drive to make a difference in the city she loved dearly will continue to inspire many. Tribute to Joan Kaplan Davidson Number 12. William Jason Morgan, the architect of modern geophysics. Morgan, the pioneering geophysicist who presented the groundbreaking theory of plate tectonics in 1967, passed away on July 31st at the age of 87 in Natick, Mass. His monumental discovery not only reshaped our understanding of earthquakes, volcanoes, and the movement of continents, but it also provided a cohesive framework that revolutionized studies across the natural sciences. Born on October 10, 1935 in Savannah, Georgia, Morgan made his mark in academia as a professor at Princeton University. While the concept of the Earth's surface being in motion had been long speculated, it was Morgan's insight, backed by meticulous research and data analysis, that offered the cohesive, testable framework of plate tectonics. His paper on the subject, published in the Journal of Geophysical Research in 1968, was swiftly recognized as a cornerstone of modern geophysics, and the theory became foundational in grade school science curriculums within a decade. Beyond plate tectonics, Morgan contributed significantly to the understanding of mantle plumes and the intricate geophysics of triple junctions. Despite these monumental achievements, he was always humble, often suggesting that had he not made the discovery, someone else would have in due time. His illustrious career was laden with accolades, including sharing the prestigious Japan Prize in 1990. The impact of his work was so profound that Anthony Dolan, former chairman of Princeton's Department of Geosciences, once remarked that the theory of plate tectonics Morgan introduced was one of the major milestones of U.S. science in the 20th century. He is survived by his children, Jason and Michelle Morgan, and six grandchildren, the world of science mourns the loss of a true titan, whose legacy will ripple through generations of geologists and geophysicists. Tribute to William Jason Morgan. Number 11. Margaret McFarlane the unsung heroine of Bletchley Park. Margaret McFarlane, a remarkable Scottish Enigma codebreaker, passed away on July 20, 2023, at the age of 102. Born in Old Deer, Aberdeenshire, Scotland in 1920, McFarlane's exceptional talent and dedication played a pivotal role during World War II at the famed Bletchley Park, alongside luminaries like Alan Turing. Starting as a 22-year-old secretary, McFarlane was soon entrusted with one of the war's most sensitive tasks, using the Enigma code machine. She was among the select few women given this responsibility. The complex Nazi codes once perceived as unbreakable were deciphered by McFarlane and her team, leading to crucial intelligence that significantly influenced the Allies' wartime strategies. For years, the profound impact of her efforts remained shrouded in secrecy, even from her own family. The world only came to recognize the significance of McFarland's contributions and the entire Bletchley Park team in the 1970s, when the veil of confidentiality was finally lifted. This recognition was cinematically immortalized in The Imitation Game, which showcased the intense and crucial work undertaken at Bletchley Park. In 2010, a long overdue honor was bestowed upon McFarland as she received a medal for her invaluable services. Today, her name proudly resides on the Roll of Honor at Bletchley Park, a testament to her indelible mark on history. Margaret McFarland's story is a poignant reminder of the countless unsung heroes whose dedication and hard work have shaped the world we live in, often from behind the scenes. Tribute to Margaret McFarland. Number 10. Ron S. Pino, 
a luminous force in Australian rock. Ron S. Pino, the iconic frontman for the revered Australian alternative rock band Died Pretty, passed away on August 10th after an extended battle with cancer at the age of 68. Born on the central coast of New South Wales, he began his illustrious music career in 1976, playing a pivotal role in shaping Sydney's burgeoning punk scene. His unmatched energy and charismatic stage presence made him a fixture in Australia's music landscape for over four decades. Died Pretty, forming around 1984, quickly became the must-see inner-city Sydney band. Their most acclaimed album, Doughboy Hollow, released in 1991, displayed the pinnacle of Pino's musical prowess, with hit singles Sweetheart and DC. The band's momentum unfortunately faced challenges, from a label's failure to repress their best-selling album to missed opportunities on American soil. Beyond Died Pretty, Pino's collaborations with artists like Kim Salmon and Cam Butler in projects such as The Darling Downs and The Superstitions showcased his versatility and enduring passion for music. Although Died Pretty saw a decline in commercial success post the release of Trace in 1993, their legacy remained untouched, with reunion tours rekindling the magic of their earlier days. In a poetic twist, Died Pretty's most recognized song, DC, celebrated fond memories and cherished moments. Today, fans and fellow musicians alike bid adieu to Ron, echoing the sentiments of the song, cherishing the indelible mark he left on Australian rock. Pino's legacy lives on through his wife, Charity, son Zebediah, and the countless melodies that will continue to resonate in the hearts of many. Tribute to Ron S. Pino. Number 9. John Barrett, the luminary of hairstyling and creator of the Bergdorf Blonde. Legendary celebrity hairstylist John Barrett, celebrated for his unrivaled artistry and the iconic salon inside Bergdorf Goodman's New York City penthouse, passed away at the age of 66 from blood cancer. Originating from Limerick, Ireland, Barrett's journey to stardom began as a hairdressing apprentice in London during the 1970s. Subsequently, he relocated to Los Angeles, intertwining his destiny with esteemed editorial and Hollywood figures. By 1996, the hairstylist Maestro introduced his signature salon in the eminent Bergdorf Goodman building, famously coining the Bergdorf Blonde Shade. Shortly after, he inaugurated another elite salon on 57th Street. Apart from his unparalleled craftsmanship, Barrett was esteemed for his affable nature and deep-seated philosophy. It's not just about the hair, it's about the care. He cultivated profound relationships with his clientele, which boasted illustrious names like Princess Diana, Reese Witherspoon, and Martha Stewart. Recounting his camaraderie with the late Princess Diana, Barrett reminisced about their immediate bond, highlighted by candid conversations and shared photographs during their first meeting. Barrett's exceptional legacy transcends his styling prowess. His salon team remembers him as a beacon of charm, wit, and candor, possessing the magical touch to make anyone feel unparalleled beauty. In the words of Martha Stewart, John was a good friend and a fantastic hairdresser. We will miss him sorely. Tribute to John Barrett, to John. Number 8. Hugh Siegel, a pillar of progressive conservatism in Canadian politics. Hugh Siegel, an influential force in Canadian politics, passed away on August 9th in Kingston, Ontario, aged 72. A multifaceted talent, he was a political strategist, author, commentator, academic, and senator. He held significant positions serving as Chief of Staff to Ontario Premier Bill Davis and Canadian Prime Minister Brian Mulroney. His dedication to Canadian politics saw him also working closely with Prime Minister John Diefenbaker and being an integral part of the Big Blue Machine. A beacon of red Tory philosophy, Siegel's political views were rooted in the emphasis on the common good and social harmony. 
His written works, including Beyond Greed and The Long Road Back, reflect his belief in traditional conservatism. In addition to his political achievements, Siegel was an advocate for a guaranteed annual income, emphasizing its social and economic benefits. In academia, Siegel left an indelible mark at Queen's University School of Policy Studies, and later as the Master of Massey College in Toronto. He also made significant contributions in journalism, appearing as a television pundit and penning columns in the 1980s and 1990s. He was not just an influential political figure, but also a loving husband to Donna Armstrong Siegel and a proud father to Jacqueline. His death is a loss to Canadian politics, and he leaves behind a legacy of dedication, perseverance, and belief in the principles of mutual responsibility and the common good. Tribute to Hugh Siegel Number 7. Henry Dickerson A trailblazer in basketball and an inspiring mentor off the court. Henry Dickerson, a vital figure in the history of the University of Tennessee at Chattanooga men's basketball, passed away at the age of 71 on August 11th. While his basketball prowess is unquestionable, his profound impact was felt beyond the bounds of the court, touching lives in a way that transcended sport. Born in Beckley, West Virginia, Dickerson's journey to Chattanooga began in 1989 when he joined Mac McCarthy's staff. His associate head coach role with the Mocs led them to a historic Sweet 16 appearance in the 1997 NCAA tournament. He went on to break barriers, becoming the program's first black head coach and earning Southern Conference South Division championships in 1998 and 2002. Before his illustrious coaching career, Dickerson was a remarkable player. At the University of Charleston, he achieved an average of 16 points and 12 rebounds per game between 1969 to 73. His record-breaking accolades in the West Virginia Intercollegiate Athletic Conference are testament to his outstanding athletic ability. He also showcased his talent in the NBA with the Detroit Pistons and the Atlanta Hawks and lit up the Eastern Basketball Association with an impressive 27.1 points average. However, it's the personal stories that illuminate Dickerson's true legacy. As Chattanooga native Johnny Taylor shared, Dickerson was not just a recruiter but a mentor, offering unwavering support during challenging times. For many, he was a confidant, always ready to offer a listening ear and a comforting word. Mac McCarthy aptly summed up the sentiments of many, stating that while Dickerson was an exceptional coach, he was an even better man. Tribute to Henry Dickerson. Number 6. Shoji Tabuchi, a fiddling virtuoso who bridged cultures. Shoji Tabuchi, the renowned Japanese-American country music fiddler and singer, passed away on August 11th at the age of 79. Born on April 16, 1944, in Daishoji, Ishikawa, Japan, his introduction to the violin at age 7 shaped a destiny that would intertwine two cultures through music. Tabuchi's passion was ignited during college, in the mid-1960s, after witnessing a performance by country legend Roy Acuff in Osaka. His ensuing journey led him from forming the Bluegrass Ramblers in Japan to performing on the Grand Ole Opry stage in Nashville, showcasing his diverse musical prowess. His greatest achievement was the Shoji Tabuchi Theater in Branson, Missouri. His greatest achievement was the Shoji Tabuchi Theater in Branson, Missouri. Established in 1990, this 2,000-seat theater became a testament to his dedication and versatility, offering shows that blended country, polka, gospel, Cajun, Hawaiian, rap, and rock music. Through it, he cultivated a devoted fan base, employing around 200 staff and performing twice daily for most of the year. In personal life, Shoji's relationships were just as rich. His first wife, Mary Jo, whom he met while performing in a financial district restaurant, blessed him with a son, Shoji John. 
Later, his second wife, Dorothy Lingo, became a pivotal figure in enhancing the production value of the Shoji Tabuchi show. His multifaceted career, with a unique blend of Japanese and American musical traditions, will remain an inspiration for generations to come. Tribute to Shoji Tabuchi Number 5. Stan Waterman, A Cinematic Odyssey, Beneath the Waves Stan Waterman, a pioneer of underwater cinematography and an ardent lover of the deep blue, passed away on the 10th of August at the age of 100. Born Stanton A waterman on the 5th of April, 1923 in Maine, his passion for the underwater realm was ignited early on, following a childhood gift of a handmade AMA face mask. Through stints in the U.S. Navy during WW2, spearfishing adventures, and studying under the legendary poet Robert Frost, Waterman proved himself a multifaceted individual with a captivating story to tell. His cinematic journey began in the 1950s, crafting his own plexiglass camera housings to shoot some of diving's earliest films, most notably his documentary Waterworld in 1954. This would be the catalyst for a succession of underwater expeditions and films that took audiences to the depths, from archaeological wonders in Turkey to the vibrant waters of French Polynesia. Waterman's crowning achievement was arguably his work on the 1971 film Blue Water White Death, the first of its kind focused on sharks. This film, coupled with his involvement in The Deep and the Emmy-winning Dancing with Stingrays, solidified Waterman's place in cinematic history. A legend not just in his field but in his own right, Waterman's love for the underwater world was unrivaled. His story was encapsulated in his autobiography, Sea Salt, Memories and Essays, and continued to inspire generations of divers and filmmakers alike. Despite his many accolades, he remained grounded, often jesting about mundane tasks that awaited him at home. The diving community and the world at large has lost a luminary, but Stan Waterman's legacy will forever ripple through the waters he so loved. Tribute to Stan Waterman Number 4. Klaus Rost Witten's wrestling legend and silver Olympian Klaus Rost, renowned for his unparalleled prowess in the realm of wrestling and especially remembered for his Olympic silver from Tokyo in 1964, passed away on August 10th at the age of 83. Born on the 2nd of March 1940 in Witten, Rost began his illustrious wrestling career at the age of 12 with KSV Witten. His outstanding dedication to the sport saw him claiming a total of 16 German championships. He participated three times in the Olympic Games and was notably a surprise winner of the silver medal in Tokyo in the freestyle up to 70 kilograms. Upon his triumphant return to Witten post the Olympics, he was celebrated by thousands, forever etching his name in the hearts of his community. Apart from his feats in the ring, Rost was also a committed coach, nurturing young athletes like Ralph Leiding and Jörg Helmdach and transforming them into international sports sensations. Furthermore, he showcased his versatility, later shifting his interest to table tennis. Described by Detlef Inglick, chairman of KSV Witten, as both a fighter and an elegant technician, Ross's grip techniques were unparalleled, captivating audiences with his unique moves across different wrestling styles. Inglick encapsulated the feelings of many, stating, We are sad that he is no longer among us. Tribute to Klaus Rost Number 3. Michaela Murgia, a resounding voice of Italy's literature and social justice. Michaela Murgia, the esteemed Italian novelist, playwright, radio personality, and a fervent advocate for social justice, passed away in Rome on the 10th of August, succumbing to fourth-stage kidney carcinoma at the age of 51. Born in Cabra, Sardinia, on the 3rd of June, 1972, 
Murgia's early life witnessed the unique tradition of soul-child adoption, which was delayed due to her natural father's opposition. Murgia's literary journey commenced with her satirical novel, Il Mondo Deve Sapere, in 2006, bringing the economic exploitation in telemarketing call centers to the limelight. The book was later adapted for stage and screen. Her 2009 novel, Acabadora, was a celebrated work that garnered the Mondello International Literary Prize and the Molinello Award for First Fiction. With a series of impactful books under her belt, including her notable work on women's rights in Italy. Beyond literature, Murgia was a passionate voice in Italy's socio-political landscape, contributing as a columnist for L'Espresso and even running in the 2014 regional elections. In her personal life, she married Lorenzo Terenzi in July 2023, sharing their home with four filos de anima. Michela Murgia's profound contributions to Italian literature and her advocacy for social justice have left an indelible mark on the nation's cultural tapestry. Her voice will echo for generations to come. Tribute to Michela Murgia. Breaking News News 1. In a devastating week for the idyllic island of Maui, Hawaii, wildfire fatalities have surged to 80, marking a tragic increase from the earlier reported figure of 67. The rapid blazes, which decimated a historical town and prompted mass evacuations, were exacerbated by forceful winds from Hurricane Dora. As the fires raged, the island's power was knocked out, hampering firefighting efforts. In an alarming twist, a new blaze ignited northeast of the earlier affected region, leading to more evacuations. Equally concerning, the Maui County Water Agency has issued stark warnings to residents. Don't drink the tap water and limit showers due to potential chemical exposure from wildfire-damaged pipes. Amidst the chaos, Hawaii Attorney General Ann Lopez announced a thorough review of decisions made during the crisis, emphasizing a commitment to clarity and understanding. News 2. Sarah Ferguson, the Duchess of York, candidly opened up about her post-mastectomy journey and the significance of lymphatic drainage massage, a procedure she recently integrated into her health regimen. Following her mastectomy, the Duchess embarked on frequent lymphatic massage sessions to stave off lymphedema, a common side effect after breast cancer operations. This condition, as elucidated by the NHS, causes tissue swelling due to a compromised lymphatic system and is particularly prevalent amongst those undergoing cancer treatments affecting the lymph nodes. Lauding the process, Sarah described the lymphatic massage as a real luxury and extolled the virtues of her therapist, emphasizing the light touch necessary for patients with surgical scars. She earnestly encouraged others recovering from mastectomies to seek expert lymph drainage therapists promptly to facilitate lymph movement. Dr. Grace Hula, shedding light on the subject, explained the crucial role lymphatic massages play after mastectomies. These specialized massages not only alleviate swelling and discomfort by aiding lymph fluid circulation, but also expedite the body's healing process. Importantly, Dr. Hula stressed the importance of seeking trained therapists for this specialized massage, ensuring safety and efficacy. Patients undergoing mastectomy are advised to confer with healthcare professionals or lymphedema therapists to identify the most beneficial treatment tailored to individual needs. Alabama basketball star Caleb White from Pinson Valley High School tragically passed away following a medical emergency at school. The 17-year-old's cause of death is under investigation. White was a top-ranked point guard. The community mourns the unexpected loss recalling his exceptional talent and vibrant personality. A three-year-old migrant child died on a bus chartered by Texas, traveling from Brownsville to Chicago, part of Governor Greg Abbott's initiative to transport migrants to Democratic-run cities. The child exhibited symptoms of illness before passing away. This incident marks the first reported death under the program, which has transported over 30,000 migrants since its inception in April 2022. Brazilian soccer player Jose Aldino Oliveira, known as Dion, 
died of a heart attack during training with Bahia de Ferra Club. The 36-year-old forward's sudden demise occurred at Arena Cajueiro, Feira de Santana. Teams and football federations have expressed condolences. Dion had played in Bahia's professional soccer scene with 23 appearances and 5 goals in 2023 for Tremendao. Jeremy Hunt's younger brother, Charlie Hunt, passed away at 53 due to an aggressive form of cancer, sarcoma. Diagnosed in 2020, Charlie had undergone surgeries and treatments. The Hunts, who both faced cancer challenges in their family, raised over 22,000 pounds for Sarcoma UK by running the London Marathon together. Now it's time to remember the legends who passed away in the past years. Number 2. Anne Hetch, a brilliant light in Hollywood's pantheon. Anne Hetcha, the distinctive actress with a career marked by creative bravado and roles that showcased her talent's vast range, passed away tragically after a devastating car accident on August 12, 2022, at the age of 53. Her life, which ended too soon, was revealed to the world by her eldest son, Homer, expressing the deep sadness and sense of loss felt by her family. Hitch's ascent in Hollywood began in the early 1990s, with a breakout role playing twins on the soap Another World. Her filmography soon expanded with varied roles, starring opposite Johnny Depp in Donnie Brasco and being a pivotal part of other iconic films such as Wag the Dog, Volcano, and I Know What You Did Last Summer. Hetch's later roles further accentuated her exceptional talent, from playing the mother of serial killer Jeffrey Dahmer to a compelling part in the 2016 black comedy Catfight. Critics lauded her for her performances, reinforcing her place in Hollywood as more than just a supporting character. However, behind the glitz and glamour, Hetch's personal narrative was laden with hardship. She bravely detailed traumatic events from her upbringing in her memoir, Call Me Crazy, giving insight into the tumultuous experiences that shaped her. The tragic events leading to her death were shocking to fans and colleagues alike. Many had clung to hope following reports of her stable condition post the accident, but her subsequent coma and the family's announcement of the improbable survival extinguished such hopes. Anne Hetch's legacy in Hollywood is undeniable with roles that showcased her keen intelligence, sharp wit, and deep emotional range. As the world mourns her loss, she leaves behind a cinematic legacy that will remain unforgettable. Tribute to Anne Hetcha. Number 1. Una Stubbs, a remarkable journey from chorus girl to television icon. Una Stubbs, a beloved figure in British entertainment, died aged 84 on August 12, 2021, in Edinburgh, surrounded by her loving family. With a career spanning over five decades, Stubbs's versatility and charm were evident in her roles. Ranging from the 1963 film Summer Holiday to the critically acclaimed series Sherlock, where she portrayed the endearing Mrs. Hudson. Stubbs' journey in entertainment began as a chorus girl, transitioning into acting with roles that showcased her exceptional talent. One of her most memorable roles was Rita, the daughter of Alf Garnett in Till Death Us Do Part. Later, her portrayal of Aunt Sally in Wurzel Gummidge solidified her as a household name. Throughout her career, Stubbs embraced diverse roles, from sitcoms to classical plays, including her debut in a Shakespearean play, Twelfth Night, in 1998. Her dedication to the craft was evident in her self-awareness and desire to continually evolve as an actor. Beyond acting, she was known for her elegance, wit, and kind-hearted nature. Colleagues like Sherlock's co-creator Mark Gaddis fondly remembered her, praising her grace, talent, and mischievous spirit. Una's resilience and commitment to her work even without formal training, showcase her dedication and natural prowess. The entertainment world has lost a truly versatile and graceful actor, leaving behind a legacy of memorable performances and an enduring impact on audiences and peers alike. Tribute to Una Stubbs
That concludes our coverage for today, but the stories of those we've lost continue to resonate with us all. We invite you to also watch our special feature on the 13 biggest stars who died recently, where we pay homage to the lives, talents, and legacies that have left an indelible mark on our world. You can find the link to that video in the description below, or click on the card appearing on your screen now. If you found today's video informative and touching, please don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to Immortal News for more compelling stories and tributes. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you in the next video. Stay safe, and take care.